So now we're going to talk about a mineral that most of us are deficient in. Yeah. So, world, so worldwide, studies have shown that we are deficient in this mineral, and this mineral causes so many symptoms. It is, you know, when we're deficient in it, because it is critical for over 400 processes in the body. Yep. So could I be deficient in magnesium? Yeah. So like I said, magnesium deficiency is one of the most common ones out there. So the thing is, we can, like maybe, have you guys done a blood test for magnesium in the doctor's office? Well, it's one of those tests that doesn't really tell you anything. Because only about 1% of your circulating magnesium is even going to show up in your blood. So it's really not, a blood test is really not a good measure of the magnesium in your body. A better measure is just kind of self-diagnosing based on symptoms. Because magnesium is very safe to supplement with. So let's talk a little more about this. So magnesium facilitates or is a cofactor in over like 400 vital chemical reactions in your body. If magnesium stopped playing a role, we would probably drop dead in just a few seconds. <laughs> so it's essential for the production of enzymes, it's involved in energy production. So anytime ATP is being made, magnesium has a role to play in that. Uh, protein synthesis, cell signaling, and much more. And those of you who've been following us for a while know how important cell signaling is to our bodies. Right. So magnesium deficiency can also interfere with vitamin D and calcium balance in the body. And magnesium, so it's a relaxing thing, right? So magnesium can relax the neurons in your body by closing calcium channels and thereby reducing the amount of signaling, reducing the excitability of your central nervous system. And that's how one of the ways it has an effect on making you a little bit calmer. And the thing with magnesium is our body can't create its own. So it can't take other raw materials and create magnesium itself. So instead it's gonna throw a whole host of symptoms to us. And so we're gonna talk about what those symptoms in are in just a minute, but we wanna cover a few more things first. Uh, so magnesium is a mineral that we must get from food as an oral supplement or topically through our skin. Yes. So it's something that um, we can get in a, a variety of ways. So magnesium is water soluble and it can be excreted from the body. And this is going to be important in just a moment. But sometimes people will get diarrhea from over ingesting certain forms of magnesium, like magnesium oxide, which is the cheapest and like that's what Calm and a lot of these magnesium supplements are made of. But it's not highly bioavailable and it sometimes causes some gastric distress. So if you've ever supplemented with magnesium and you're like, I'm not going back there, not doing those bathroom adventures again, it may just be the form and we are going to cover that as well today. So another thing to know is that our body's ability to absorb magnesium decreases the older that we get. So, I mean, that's right when we need it. Um, and long-term magnesium deficiency causes issues in the body. Um, higher risk of cardiovascular disease, uh, osteoporosis, uh, I got <laughs> Osteopenia. Uh, yeah, osteopenia, osteoporosis, metabolic disorders, including type 2 diabetes. So magnesium supplementation is currently being studied as a management mechanism for all those diseases, additionally like heart disease, high blood pressure, asthma, and even pain management. So there's so many good benefits that magnesium can have for our body. But there's a few ways that some of the things that we intake, like coffee, actually depletes the magnesium stores in our body. Right, so studies show that magnesium can act at the blood-brain barrier to prevent the entrance of stress hormones. Now, I want to take a second to, everybody says the blood-brain barrier, but nobody really understands what it is. And that's been the case for me until I took a biology class. So the blood vessels that go to your brain have to, def you know, they get smaller and smaller and there's uh, fenestrations in them that allow uh, blood through. Um, and that's like, there's tightly held junctions there, right? So these are very thin capillaries. Um, and there, there has to be a way for things to get through that to the brain where it needs to be used. So there's things called astrocytes, which are a form of a glial cell, part of the central nervous system, that are like a star, right? They fan out and they, they kind of cover some of those 
those gaps in the capillaries to help form that blood-brain barrier along with endothelial cells. So if you have endothelial cell damage or if you have uh, big gaps in your astrocyte cells, that's when you can have like this breakdown of this blood-brain barrier. Well, magnesium is one of those minerals that helps strengthen and keep that barrier in place. And so things that aren't supposed to leak across the blood-brain barrier don't leak across. Yeah, and we certainly don't want things getting in there that don't belong in there. So what depletes magnesium stores? I just kind of teased you about that a moment ago. So coffee. So coffee is a natural diuretic. And don't get me wrong, I love my coffee. But it's important to understand that because it's a diuretic, it's going to flush out your magnesium before it can get absorbed by the body because magnesium is one of the water soluble vitamins. So just be aware that the more coffee you drink, the more you're going to need to supplement with magnesium to make up for the loss. And what's interesting is that even six hours after that cup of coffee, it's still acting as a diuretic. So keep that in mind. The other thing is that studies show that drinking coffee actually reduces the intestine's ability to absorb the magnesium into the body. So with coffee, you've got a, kind of got a double-edged sword there. You're excreting it faster than your body can absorb it, and then your intestines are not as able to absorb it. So I drink coffee, Jeremy drinks coffee, and we supplement with magnesium at bedtime. It's great at bedtime because it helps relax you and can improve your give you a good night's sleep. So alcohol consumption also acts as a diuretic and has that same effect where it's flushing it out of your system. So alcohol actually also results in less pancreatic enzymes being produced, which also reduces the absorption of magnesium. But also think about that, less pancreatic enzymes also means that other things are not being absorbed. That really across the entire spectrum of vitamins and minerals. Um, and then chronic alcohol use leads to, of course, liver damage uh, and other impairments in the body, which can further reduce your ability to absorb magnesium. So that may mean that you need a higher dose of supplementing with magnesium. So now we're going to get into the signs of magnesium. So we have quite a few signs of magnesium. I'm going to have to go back and count them, but signs of low magnesium, All excuse right. me. So disclaimer, this is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Please see your doctor if you have any of these symptoms. All right, so number one is low energy. So just you're struggling with energy throughout the day. Maybe you hit noon, have lunch, and you just can't seem to pick that energy back up. Or maybe you're even waking up and still feeling tired. So this can be a sign of magnesium deficiency because remember Jeremy talked about how magnesium is directly involved in energy production, the production of ATP. And that's really the energy currency that your cells respond to. So that's why low energy is the number one sign of a magnesium deficiency. Uh, good old constipation. Uh, magnesium oxide is great at loosening stools and keeping the pipes from getting clogged uh, while other forms of magnesium are better for uh, more absorption, um, yeah. So, and headaches, including migraines. So I am a former sufferer of terrible, terrible migraines that just blew my life away. Like I really couldn't function. Migraines were a daily experience for me. And I wish I had known about magnesium then because I was prescribed so many medications and one of them was a muscle relaxer. Well, you guessed it, magnesium acts as a muscle relaxer. So if you're having, but headaches can also be caused by the magnesium deficiency itself. Um, and there's a bit, there's some research around migraines and using magnesium to prevent migraines or even treat them when they're occurring. So um, we're also going to post a ton of links and resources um, later on. Some of them we'll, we'll be putting in the chat roll and some of them will be posted when we break these apart and repost them on YouTube. Uh, the next one is insomnia. Now, I know this is kind of a pervasive problem, and it's probably getting even worse in today's environment. But if you're struggling to sleep, taking a high dose of magnesium at bedtime can help your body relax, feed this, this need for additional magnesium. Uh, and plus, you know, magnesium is not habit-forming, not like a lot of the sleep aids that you might take over the counter or something even stronger like an Ambien. Yeah, you can feel, feel really, really good about using magnesium to help you relax and go to sleep because you're doing something really healthy for your body and it's not going to be habit-forming. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, so 
if you have numb or tingling, your fingers or toes, you know, we probably all experience once or twice in our life, but some people have a chronic condition. Sometimes magnesium can help because magnesium is essential for nerve function. Right. And so like restless leg syndrome, I have a coworker, a friend who is tapping his foot constantly all the time. And I, I suspect that it's probably partially due to a magnesium deficiency. Uh, and so muscle cramps or muscle twitching, again, you know, like muscles just won't relax. Uh, as if you've experienced these more when you're under stress, uh, when you're under stress, our body burns through magnesium faster, so you might cramp a lot easier without doing extra uh, labor or exercise. So that can be the Charlie horse you get in the middle of the night or while just sitting. Oh, that foot cramp it can in the middle be of the night. cramps in your hands and your feet, um, you know, or, or elsewhere, but... Those Charlie horses tend to be pretty... Uh, so I had a Charlie horse and I have topical magnesium sitting right beside me on my nightstand. Because, you know, on keto, sometimes we're just excreting a lot of electrolytes and we do end up with a magnesium deficiency. So I woke up like at 2 a.m. one morning with a terrible Charlie horse. And I'm sure I woke you up. This was probably six months ago. I wake up and you're just screaming, right? And the pain is so bad. It woke you up from a deep sleep and the pain is excruciating. And I'm like, oh, that magnesium oil is right beside me. And I reached over and I like jerked the lid, lid, lid off, like, like twisting myself into a pretzel, right? And I slapped that magnesium oil on it and it just released. It was gone. I remember. Yeah. I just rolled over and went back to sleep. Yeah. And then I rolled over and went back to sleep. But magnesium in the middle of a Charlie horse or a muscle cramp are great. And if you have athletes or you are an athlete and you do lifting, using topical magnesium on your muscles that you just worked is a great way to speed recovery. Yeah. So high blood pressure, heart arrhythmias, um, including AFib or heart conditions can all benefit from extra magnesium in the body. So if you're if you're struggling with any of those things, um, magnesium is what helps the muscle, the heart, relax after a contraction. So a lot of times, um, like the next one is a fast heart rate. So I'll just combine those together, a fast heart rate. So magnesium is there to help the muscles react, re relax. Um, so just Google and blood pressure, just Google magnesium for blood pressure. And I was just shocked at the number of studies that came up um, with all kinds of things um, that there it's documented saying that magnesium helps to lower high blood pressure. And, and in turn, hypertension because your blood vessels will constrict without, a, you know, with a deficiency of uh, magnesium making hypertension a problem. Yeah, so... so um, I, we hope we are finding this helpful. So nausea, especially with pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, you know a friend who's pregnant who's really dealing with severe morning sickness. Sometimes supplementing with magnesium can really help that. Of course, sometimes you can't handle anything in your stomach. So using magnesium topically could be an option that could help out with that. Uh, osteoporosis and osteopenia. So your body needs magnesium and calcium in the proper ratio in order to store calcium in the bones, right? So we used to see just calcium pills and calcium pills and calcium chews and all this kind of stuff for, for older adults and nobody ever talked about magnesium and supplementation of calcium without magnesium can actually lead to problems where you're leaching more calcium from your bones than you're putting back in. So it's really important to get both of these in the right proportion together. Um, yeah. And then all kinds of mental health symptoms. You know, it's a first line of treatment in our therapist office uh, using, ma using magnesium as, as, as a side therapy. So anxiety, apathy, depression, irritability, and all other behavioral disorders can really be helped with magnesium. So there's there's tons of different studies out there that, that show the mental health benefits. And we went through quite a few symptoms. <laughs> um, so I kind of grouped those together. But there's a lot of mental health things that magnesium can really help support. Right. So stress consumes magnesium and magnesium calms down stress. So it's really... You, it's so important because stress will just burn through it and there's so many other processes in your body that need magnesium besides the stress. So that's why we say uh, supplementing with this almost until the point where you do have some diarrhea and then backing it off.
to know what your right level is. Because yes. it's, it's, again, it's not habit forming. It's not something you can really overdose. The overdose effects are diarrhea, which we can all handle pretty much because we're all adults. Um, and then just back it off and then just, you know, see and gauge how well you feel at different levels. Yeah. And like my naturopath always says, treat acute symptoms acutely. So magnesium is one of those. Let's say you have a headache or a migraine and you want to give magnesium a try. So you take it and it, seem, it seems to fade away, but then two hours later you notice it's kind of starting to come back. Well, that would be an acute problem and it's time to dose acutely. So that's how my naturopath teaches us how to handle supplements like magnesium that's water soluble and excess is going to be excreted from the body. Now, if you have any kind of liver issues, any struggles with your liver, you do need to be careful with any additional supplements. So make sure that you consult with your doctor before changing anything or starting anything new. Uh, and then just know that, you know, like it's something that can take more than just a day or a week to take effect. You know, there's um, Most stores of, these studies... of magnesium in your body. So you need to build those stores back up. Yeah. Um, and that can take upwards of six weeks. Yeah, and most of the studies are longer term. So keep in mind that this, you may not feel a huge change right away, and it could just be that your magnesium stores are that depleted, and your body just needs time to catch up with it. So um, we're going to go into our favorite magnesium supplements and a little bit more about this in our next segment.